Coin or token? What's the difference and why the heck do I care? I'll give you a little secret. It's to help you get rich. What's up my Milk Money Millionaires? I'm Joshua and welcome to Milk Money where we learn to make our money, make more money. I believe you don't have to be rich to get rich. So if you want to learn to be a middle class millionaire, make sure you invest in that like button and compound it with hitting that subscribe button as well. All right, so especially with Bitcoin taking most of the attention, we think of the whole cryptocurrency space as being made of coins. But we also have a world of tokens. In general discussion, a lot of people use these interchangeably and may often get them confused, especially myself. Speaking of the confusion, stable coins are actually tokens. So anyway, what is the difference and why does it matter? That's what I'm going to answer in this video. And at the end, I'll even mention how to use that knowledge to invest in crypto. All right. So first off, let's talk about the cryptocurrency definition. Then we'll talk about each coin and token individually, and then how they compare and then how to use that for investments. So anyway, the main function of currency is to be a store of value and a transfer of value. And cryptocurrency is simply just currency on the vet of the blockchain. So you could store and send value using cryptocurrency, just like you would use coins and dollars to send real value in the real world. Now that digital cryptocurrency is made out of coins and tokens. While they both exist and run on blockchains, a coin is the currency of a specific blockchain and meant to be used only on that chain. For example, we have Bitcoin, which is only exists on the Bitcoin blockchain and a token is meant to be shared between chains. So something like Aave could go back and forth between more than one. So first let's get into what a coin is. Basically they're used to store and transfer value on a specific blockchain. If you want to plug into that chain with your own technology, then you would need to purchase coins in order to access and use that network. Ethereum is one of the most popular networks that a lot of smaller projects try to develop on and access, making its coins in high demand. Some big examples of coins are going to be Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Litecoin. And of course, you can't forget about Dogecoin. It's got a little doggy on it. How cute, right? But what is a token? A token is very similar in Bitcoin in that it transacts as a digital currency, but it also has some special features. Most importantly, that they can represent a wide variety of assets and act as keys to utilize a function of a blockchain, giving the token holder rights to participate in that network. Now, the tokens and the technology that they're implementing must be on top of another blockchain. So Ethereum is, again, the most commonly built upon blockchain. And so there are many, many tokens that are built into the Ethereum system, which is called the ERC20 format. And they all require ETH for those transactions to work. If you want to utilize your token to access Ethereum, you will have to pay what's called a gas fee, which is like a toll to utilize the Ethereum network. So many exchanges require you to buy ETH so that you can use Ether instead of cash essentially to buy and trade tokens. Now what's cool about tokens is they're not just used like a coin for money. They also could be used as like tools or keys to get access to different applications and different networks. And some of the categories and uses that tokens have would be to be as utility tokens, security tokens, asset tokens, so they can represent an asset in the real world and it get links to a token and then that token gets traded on the blockchain. They create stable coins, which is a store of real world currency so that you can transact dollars on the network. There's payment tokens, equity tokens, Tether, Chainlink, and Aave are examples of popular tokens. One of the main differences between tokens and coins um, is that coins are created usually through mining and tokens can be created through initial coin offerings to raise money for the development of the technology. Now, how to tell if you have a coin or a token? Pretty simply, if you go into coin market cap and you come into your coin or token description, right underneath there's a tag that says token. Now, if you want to search and only see tokens, then at the top there's a menu where I can filter by tokens. And now all of these are examples of tokens. If I want to do the same for coins, get rid of the tag here and instead search for coins. And again, so I'll click on Polkadot and underneath Polkadot, it's described as a coin. And you'd use that coin to transact on the Polkadot blockchain. All right, so it's pretty simple. The difference between coins and tokens, it's not a huge deal. People are using the terms interchangeably all the time. It's not gonna make that big of a difference if you call something a coin or a token, but if you're engineering and building on the network, it probably helps to know the difference and how they're used. If you really wanna understand the currency, knowing whether it's a coin or a token will help you understand how it should act and things like that. But we can also use this knowledge to help us make investing decisions. And so the way I'm kind of trying to do it is use the tokens and coins that exist as clues on what other popular tokens and coins are and as clues to how much they're being adopted and how many engineers and how many projects are plugging into it. Because essentially this cryptocurrency space is all going to depend on what's called the network effect, where it doesn't matter how great your tool is, doesn't matter how great your coin or token is, if nobody's using it, and nobody's building on it and nobody's transactioning on it and nobody's connected to it, then your coin and your technology 
is going to be relatively worthless because the power of the blockchain is the linkage between many people, many users, and many technologies. So when we start investigating and research coins and tokens, we can get some clues on what's popular and what blockchain networks are going to be the future. So for instance, the most obvious is you look at Ethereum, which is the second largest by market cap. And so you know the Ethereum space has got a lot of support behind it. So when you start with the Ethereum coin and you see it growing and growing, then that's a clue that the technology and the support for that coin and that technology is growing and growing as well and can give you some faith. But also, not, not just looking at Ethereum by itself, which is a little bit kind of obvious, you can look and see how many other tokens are being built to run on Ethereum. And so if you have two coins that are competing with each other and one has got 10 tokens being built with small amount of interest and you compare it to Ethereum has got many, many tokens being built for it, it could give you clues that that Ethereum must be popular because lots of tokens are being added to support that Ethereum network. But also even better is you can reverse that analysis and look for opportunities for future growth and returns and smaller tokens. So how I would do that is take a popular coin that is growing and that you believe in. So if you believe in a coin, then you can look and see what tokens are coming up up the pipe to support that coin. Because as your coin grows, the tokens that are tying into it also have a good chance of growing. And the biggest returns can be going like three levels out. So if you can find a token on top of a token. So if I look at Ethereum, I move down the line and see Chainlink is gonna be an essential token for that network. So I can invest in that, or I can even look for smaller chains by looking at something like Polkadot, which is a smaller coin, and look for what's plugging into that. Because it's newer, there's still room for that technology to go from the bottom up and have higher X multiples of returns. So for instance, Polkadot, which is currently at $18 and starting to prove itself to becoming popular, you can look for what are some tokens that are being built for the Polkadot network. An example one is Polkastarter. And you could be getting in a Polkastarter on pretty much the ground up. And if you believe in Polkadot as a coin and as a blockchain, then you might also believe in Polkastarter and you can leverage up your investment on Polkadot by buying some Polkastarter. It's new and it's near the ground floor of its price you've got a chance to 10, 20, 30, 100x your returns. So what kind of seems like a trivial nomenclature difference can actually be useful information in investing in crypto. You can use it to make you rich. And make sure you like and subscribe to this channel because then as I keep researching coins and learning about this space, I will be making videos for you. So hopefully we can uncover the next 1000x opportunity in one of these new tokens. Anyway, I'm Joshua. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video where we learn how to make our money, make more money.